Well, happy scenes here at Mount Panorama Bathurst. We know who they want, Larry Perkins. The side says it. Let's go down to Gary Wilkinson for what should be one happy presentation. Thank you, Mike Raymond. Yes, we know who they want. The chant has gone up here. We want Larry. We've got a couple of other people to acknowledge, though, before we get that far. First of all, the winners of the two-leader category and the little BMW, they've done it for the second year running, Peter Dillman and John Cotter. Guys, Peter, you guys came here, it looked like you almost weren't going to get here, you came here with no money and you won it again. Yeah, well, we worked hard and I guess we've done it, but uh, it's fabulous, we're pleased. John, you had the early battles there with the two Caltex team cars, but yeah. they seemed to drop off about two thirds distance. Yeah, it turned out to be BMW reliability that sort of saved the day for us. The two leader category winners for the second year running, Peter Dillman and John Cotter. <laughs> Larry will be here in a minute. But first of all, third place getter outright for Telecom Mobile Net Commodore and the Holden Racing Team, Wayne Gardner and Brad Jones. Does this make up for some of the disappointments of last year, or does it not? Well, last year was a good learning curve, but uh, to come back with a really good car and a good team and uh, finish on the podium, I'm very, very happy for, for Brad and myself. It was a team effort, and thanks to Telecom and the HRT team. And to Brad, he drove a fantastic race. It's a great effort, and uh, thanks, everybody, for coming. It was just unreal. Thanks, guys. I think that Wayne did a great run in the car in the last thing and we've been great right in the hat. I'd just like to thank Telecom and Holden for giving us a great car and uh, all you people for coming. Thank you. They're back this year for Winfield in a Commodore. They've taken second money. Mark Scaife and Jim Richards. the best shot there were some dicey choices that had to be made about tires and just for one little slip it could have been yours there at the finish well you know we both tried our bum off all day and to our team and to Winfield, Yokohama, Holden, Qantas all their efforts been fantastic the car's as good as we could make it and to get beat by 10 seconds over 161 laps it's a great effort well done to Larry and Greg obviously their team was, did, a, did a fantastic job Jim Jimmy, you got any uh, quotable quotes for us this year? No, none this year. I'd like just to thank all the people from coming. It looks like it's a great crowd. Congratulate Larry. Thank our sponsors, Winfield, Yokohama, Qantas, and uh, thanks to Fred Gibson, the boys, and thanks to Mark. Jim, I uh, just saying there was some really dodgy, or not dodgy, but uh, delicate choices had to be made there about tyres. You elected to stay out on the hot slicks, but you were bored undone up here at the top corner going up the mountain straight. I had a car spin in front of me and I had to avoid it, which we had to do a U-turn and come back onto the track, which lost me some time. Well, it was a great effort to finish second under any circumstances in a day of very changeable fortune. Congratulations on a fantastic effort. Thank Jim you. Richards and Mark Skay. Well, a fantastic cheer for Samantha and Carrie the girls from Tui's bearing the garlands. And those garlands belong to the winners of the 1993 Tui's 1000, 
They're about to join us out here on the balcony right now. Larry Perkins and Greg Hansford. three times before but I reckon this must be the sweetest victory of all you've got pole you've got the race you've done it all yeah yeah we're delighted uh, I thank my team Castrol and Dunlop and of course Greg Hansford I couldn't have done it without him Larry when the weather really looked like turning to mush out there, you took a really big gamble and stayed out on slicks. You must have been in touch with the Almighty. No, I, I was very much in tune with my car. Absolute faith in the Dunlops. Absolute faith in my machinery. It couldn't have been better, and I'm that happy to let the win from the front. Absolutely ecstatic. Greg, you were so nervous standing down there the last 15 laps or so, I thought you were going to have a baby. My, uh, my heart was on the rev limiter. But I've never been to a race before where for a whole week there's nothing gone wrong from the minute we arrived here. And the whole thing went like clockwork up until now. And th thank Larry very, very much for having me with him. For all you uh, fans out there who braved the weather, I thank you from absolute maximum thanks. You're an absolute wonderful crowd and I thank you very much. you all got drenched in champagne. Well, this has to be about the most popular victory that I have ever seen here at Mount Panorama in all the years that I've been coming here. The victors for the great race of 1993, Larry Perkins and Greg Hansford. We'll be back in a few moments. Well, it's now official lightning. Larry Perkins is the king of the mountain for 1993. Of course, there are always going to be hard luck stories to come out of the race. We saw Dick Johnson earlier taken to hospital for uh, exploratory x-rays on an ankle. He is quite okay. Neil Crompton uh, and Mark Gibbs came to a sticky end. Neil, unfortunately, is with me to talk about that. And it's been a... I suppose I'd have to say a tough weekend at the office, Neil, for you. It hasn't been that good, Sandy. It's a bit disappointing. We had a very good car this weekend, and we thought after Sandown that the GIO Australia team had a fair chance of being very successful here. Where did you think you'd finish? What were you looking at? What I, were your expectations? I genuinely thought after practice started, probably third, in all honesty. I didn't think it was possible to really meet the pace of either Larry or, um, or Jimmy and Mark. They were very strong all week. They had an advantage from early in the week, and they kept it, and they kept it for 161 laps today. Uh, we deliberately started very conservatively this morning and uh, I got a good start. I think I managed to get into the top half dozen quite quickly and then just sat there, had a bit of fun with uh, Paul Radisich, with Peter Brock and a few of the boys and uh, took care of gearbox and brakes and engine, short shifted the thing so it wasn't doing a lot of revs and thought this is looking pretty good. And a couple of times I phoned up to Bob and said, I, I, I don't think I'll get involved in this. I'll just stay. No, nah, good decision, Cromley. Stay out of it. You know, this is good. Keep stroking along. Stick to the plan. How far behind the leaders are we? You know, because I was starting to get paranoid. No, no, no. Because Sandown, I made quite a blue. I, I went too hard, basically. But uh, it was disappointing. But we've got a very good car. And uh, we've got our fingers crossed that we're, you know, we'll go again next year. And hopefully I'll, I'll have a job and uh, 
you know, I think we've got uh, an exciting future. I'm sure you'll have a job, but tell me, does it make much of a difference, do you think, with someone like uh, Larry Perkins? In fact, we'll have a look at uh, the end of your uh, campaign here. What actually happened with Mark? <clears throat> well, the track was wet at this stage. We elected to keep him out on slicks, which is pretty much what everybody did. A couple of the fellas, I noticed Alan uh, Grice was talking earlier on to Freddie Gibson. A few of them had gone for groove slicks, and I think that was probably also quite a good decision. You see, the thing is, you're in the lap of the gods in terms of, of what's going to happen. You've got no idea what's going to happen with the weather, and you can gamble either way. But Mark got trapped, uh, probably got on the gas just a little bit too early in front of Peter Brock. Uh, we were really trying to stretch it. We wanted the weather to make up its mind. We wanted to get to the end of that fuel load and then if it got uh, to the end of that fuel load and it then got quite wet, I would jump in the car because I've driven the car all year. Yeah. And for some obscure reason, I seem to be quite comfortable in the car in the wet at the moment. Mark hasn't driven it in the wet. And these cars are pretty flighty and you know, they're quite heavy and uh, they've got a lot of horsepower. Even though they've got the wings which make an advantage in terms of downforce, they can be still quite difficult to control. And uh, you know, he's made a mistake. I, I know how he feels. We've all made them. You make them, I make them. We do them all the time. It's like stubbing your toe at the, you know, when you've got the thongs on in summer. I say, I don't, I hold no malice towards Mark. I feel very sad for him, very bad for him. He's done a great job and uh, uh, some days are, uh, are going to go your way and, and some days aren't. And the, I mean, I think the world's sick of whingers and moaners and you just have to cop it on the chin and go, right. go to the next thing. Quite right, Neil. Well, speaking of that, what is the next thing? Well, we've got the motor show actually coming up in Sydney later this week, so it's back to the workshop tomorrow and put yeah. a new front on the car or whatever's required to get it back in shape. And uh, we'll go to the International uh, Motor Show in Sydney and sign a few hats and <laughs> sign a few cards and pretend to smile and have a good time. Uh, the fellas are basically going to have a week off. They deserve it. Wally Story, Peter Harker, Adam Coffin, uh, all the team, a huge number of fellas, 21 people here this weekend have worked their absolute backsides off. Yeah. And, uh, Bob Murphy, I, I dip my hat to them. I can't believe their commitment, their skill. Uh, we're going to give them a breather and then regroup and get organised for the Australian Grand Prix in Adelaide and, uh, and then we're going to have some time off and then we need to do some testing to get up to Larry's pace and up to uh, Mark's and Jimmy's pace, which was very impressive. So when does the 94 campaign for Bathurst start? Does it start tonight? For me? In about five minutes. <laughs> really? That's... Well, yeah, I think so. We've got a lot of work to do. We've, got, uh, we've learned a few things out of this last couple of weeks and... Uh, you know, there's a very important ingredient in motorsport and that's money and part of my role with the team is to do some of the general management things. So we'll be talking to our sponsors and, uh, you know, so that there'll be no rest. But uh, anyway, I'd also like to congratulate Larry Perkins, yep. uh, Greg Hansford uh, and of course Jimmy and Mark. I think they did a tremendous job today and they deserve their success. Well done. Good luck next year. Look forward to seeing you once again back at the match. Thank you. I'll be here. Neil Crompton. Now let's go back to uh, Gary Wilkinson now in the press centre with some of the drivers, the victors of the day. Thank you very much, Sandy Roberts. And uh, in the press centre here, all the drivers are uh, beginning to gather following the race today. And we're about to hear some uh, tales of glory, some tales of woe. But first of all, we've got one very serious duty to perform because uh, Mr. Jim O'Mahony is with me, the managing director of TUIs. And he's going to hand over the TUIs 1000 trophy for 1993 to Larry Perkins and to Greg Hansford. Thank you, Gary. Well, today was my first taste of uh, Bathurst. And uh, I have to say, with the head-to-head -head battle that was going on throughout all of the race, uh, it provided great excitement and a real thrilling finish. Um, Tui's are proud to be sponsors of this race for the sixth season, and uh, we're looking forward to continuing that sponsorship. It's great for us. A lot of people have been involved in the success of this race. I'd like to thank the ARDC, Channel 7, Forcefield Marketing, and the Bathurst City Council, and the many others that have been involved in the event. With the return of the big V8s this year, We've seen a, a near record crowd, and we were only 236 below the 1987 record. We got 43,736 today, and I think the racing fans really voted with their feet and showed up again for the big V8s. I'd now like to present um, a great Waterford Crystal Trophy to the winning drivers, Larry Perkins and Greg Hansford. Well, this is a sweet victory for Larry Perkins and for Greg Hansford both. The Castrol Commodore has run sweetly the entire week. They've set the pace. They set the pace again today, and uh, they've got their... Uh...